Hey, this is Ricky and welcome to another video. In this video, we will put Amy to the test. I've organized loads of virtual events in the last two years. So in this video, we will analyze how Amy stacks up from an event organizer's perspective. To give you an idea of what to expect, we will cover the following topics during this review. First, we'll start with what is Airmeet? Second, who should organize events using Airmeet? And what type of events can you organize with Airmeet? Then we'll look at some benefits and drawbacks of Airmeet, and I'll show you how to set up a basic event. Then of course, we'll cover the main features of Airmeet, and we'll compare how Airmeet stacks up against the competition. As always, for quick navigation, take a look at the timestamps in the description of this video. So, let's get started with understanding what Airmeet is. Airmeet is a fast-growing cloud or web-based virtual event platform founded in 2019. It's a new kit on the block out there, but Airmeet has already some noteworthy investors supporting them, such as Sequoia and Redpoint. Airmeet currently has over 2,400 customers worldwide which is not bad for a company that's only a few years old. In my experience, Airmeet is best for event organizers who are looking for a virtual event platform that is easy to use and feels modern. In addition, it's a platform that supports extensive sponsorship features and is heavily focused on social interactions and networking. These are the elements that are key to, success, to hosting successful B2B events. Airmeet offers networking features such as the ability to join networking tables and they have matchmaking features that connect people in one-to-one -one meetings based on their interests and this is really neat. And of course I will show you how this works later in the video. So what type of events can you actually organize with Airmeet? Most people will use Airmeet to host virtual conferences but you can also host smaller workshops, webinars, and even meetups. Personally, I use it mostly for larger virtual conferences. You can host events with up to 100,000 people, and this is quite a bit. Airmeet is especially suitable for associations and nonprofit organizations. These industries are all about building and engaging a community through networking. These are exactly the strong points of Airmeet when talking about their features. By the way, if you want to see a detailed review of Airmeet, check out my written article that includes a lot of statistics as well. So, now let's take a look at some of the benefits and some of the drawbacks of the Airmeet platform. From my testing and experience, Airmeet really stands out when it comes to the ease of use of the platform. The configuration of Airmeet events is very straightforward, even if you don't have a lot of experience with virtual event platforms. Sponsorships help to offset the cost of events or sometimes are even the main revenue stream of events. I was really pleased to see the sponsorship features of Airmeet. I will dive deeper into the sponsorship features of Airmeet in a moment. Airmeet offers a speed networking feature that allows your audience to schedule meetings with each other. This is really a neat feature that stood out to me. The last benefit of Airmeet are their audience engagement features and their very supportive uh, support team, which is crucial when hosting large events. Some drawbacks of Airmeet are some of the networking features are not working on the Safari browser. And this is, uh, this is not ideal. I'm a data guy and in, in my opinion, their event reporting features should be a little bit more sophisticated. To give you an example, at the moment, it doesn't include data on the duration of session attendees. And this is very important for lead scoring. The networking features of Airmeet, of Airmeet are really good, but the audience can't view the full profile of other attendees, which kind of limits finding people to meet with. At the moment, there is no multilingual support for sessions. For example, you can't upload subtitle files, which will help with accessibility. If you're still here and receive some value out of this video, I would really appreciate it if you could like this video and consider subscribing. Now, that was a lot of talking, let's dive into the platform and take a look at the main features of Airmeet and how you can set up a basic event. So here we are in the back end of Airmeet. Once you are logged in, you can create either a meetup or a conference. 
A meetup is for smaller events such as webinars and workshops and a conference is of course a large virtual conference. This is usually the type of event that I organize, but whatever works for you. To set up a basic event, just simply click on host a meetup or click on host a conference. So in this case, we'll host a conference. So to create a new conference, we'll just give it a quick name. So I'll call it Ricky's Con conference and then I'll create the event. So now we've actually set up a basic virtual event on Airmeet. But how long does it take to configure your event? Well, we have reviewed it. And if you look at my written review of Airmeet, then I did some testing on how long it takes up to set up a virtual conference on Airmeet. To supply basic information, such as the title and description, take you half a minute. Adjusting event entry and participant settings, including the registration form, will take two and a half minutes. Configuring venue settings, assuming that you have the graphics already designed, then that will take you three minutes. To add five sessions to the event, it will take you eight minutes. And to add five speakers, it will take you five minutes. Configuring three sponsorship booths, assuming that the graphics and resources are ready, it will take you 14 minutes. So this is probably the most resource intensive thing of setting up Airmeet events, it's the, comp it's the sponsorship booths. Um, adding three sponsors and sponsorship tiers will take you three minutes and adding a backdrop for stages, assuming that the design files are ready, will take you half a minute depending on how many backdrops you're going to add. And adding pre-recorded videos will take you half a minute. So basically to set up a very basic Airmeet conference, it will take you 37 minutes. Of course, if your conference is going to become more complex, then this time will, this time will increase. So going back to Airmeet. So once you've created your Airmeet or your conference, then this is the screen that you're presented with. On the left hand side, you have a little menu where you can navigate through the different settings available to you. So under event entry and participants, you can do a couple of things. You can adjust your registration form. The basic, uh, the basic registration form looks like this. So just a name and just some basic information but you can actually adjust this according to your preferences. Then navigating to the venue settings. Under the venue settings, you can customize the reception. So to give you an idea on how the Airmeet reception looks, I've just entered that demo event. And basically, this is, uh, this is an example of how the Airmeet reception looks like. You have a video in the middle, for example, and you, you have some buttons on the, on the left, on the right, and on the bottom. Going back to the venue settings, this is where you can just change a logo, you can add a banner and all that good stuff. Just the basic stuff. Then going to schedule. At the schedule settings, this is where you can add multiple sessions to your event. So if you want to have multiple sessions, this is where you add it. You simply click on add an item. Uh, you, can, you can stream a session into Airmeet from another platform, or you can just create one on Airmeet itself. And then you just have to fill in some basic information. You can fill in the host. So of course I'm the host now, but if you have more speakers, then you can select more people to become the host. And also you can add some co-hosts and all that, all that sort of stuff. Then going to the speaker and host. This is where you can add speakers and hosts. So you just click on add speaker. You have to supply some basic information and you click on save. Now to set up sponsorship booths or virtual booths for your virtual event, navigate to the booth section. Here you can add a new booth. You just give it a name, let's say Markletic. And um, uh, ricky.wolf at markladic.com. You can add a logo if you want, and then that's your booth edit. Once you have created a booth, you have to complete the booth setup. So you can add a logo, a description, images, dedicated tables, videos, external links, and resources. So, to give you an idea on, how, on what a virtual booth looks like on Airmeet, I'm going to the demo event again. I will go to booths. And this, uh, these are just a few examples, right? This is the overview page. So let's click on Airmeet. And this is the virtual booth of a sponsor of, of, of your event. So on the top, you have a video. You can customize a lot of these things. You can chat with, uh, with the host of the, of the virtual booth. 
you can um, you can live broadcast into your booth and also there's some networking tables so this is where Amit really stands out and I think is one of their key features as an attendee you can take a seat at the table so if you're the sponsor you can create custom tables if you please for example with different themes like meet the CIO or you know get a demo and then um, people who are visiting your virtual booth on Airmeet, they can just take a seat and chat with people. So once you click on it, it will open sort of like a like a, sort of like a Zoom chat where you can uh, interact with people and uh, also see them, of course. So this is a very excellent feature of Airmeet. Going back to the event platform setup, um, of course. If you're going to have booths, you also want to have sponsors, right? So if you navigate to the sponsors section, then the basic tiers are gold, silver and bronze. If you want to add more sponsorship tiers, this is definitely possible. You just click manage tiers and you add a few more. So after you have added your tiers, it's time to add sponsors to your event. So simply click on the button add sponsor, add the basic information of the sponsor, including a logo and then click on add sponsor. So now let's look at the stage backdrop settings. So this is where you can add a different uh, backdrop for your, for your stages. Of course, there's a standard library available, but you can also upload your custom imagery. Videos speaks for itself. You can, um, you can stream pre-recorded videos into Airmeet, but you can also just upload your videos. So if you want to pre-record your videos, this is where you upload them. And then when you configure your sessions, you can choose to display a video. Live stream, you can live stream your Airmeet events to other channels, such as Facebook, YouTube, but also through a custom RTMP, basically allowing it you to stream it to a lot of different platforms. Tickets, of course, a very important aspect of hosting virtual conferences. You can get paid for your Airmeet events by connecting your Airmeet account to your Stripe account, and that's how you can sell tickets and earn money from your events. So of course, when you sell tickets to, uh, through Stripe, it does cost you a little bit for every ticket that you sell. And at the, at the time of making this video, Stripe will currently charge you 2.9% plus 30 cents per successful card charge. So it's not too much, but um, do know that there's a charge involved. Next, moving to recordings. So this is um, where your recordings will, will be after sessions took place. Moving to analytics, this is after your event is over, this is where you can come and export your data. And of course, a very important aspect of virtual event conferences when it comes to analytics is the analytics that you will provide to your sponsors because your sponsors are there to get value out of the event. So you need to provide them with data as well. So in my review, I've displayed what reporting uh, sponsors get access to on Airmeet. And basically you can go through the list. I will leave a link in the description of this video. But this is the type of stuff that um, you can share with your sponsors. I must say that Airmeet does integrate with Zapier. So that basically means you can integrate Airmeet with any other marketing tool available on, on the web. So now let's take a look at some of the key features. I've already mentioned some. In my opinion, some of the key features of, of Airmeet are the virtual booths, right? Sponsorships will get a lot of value for their money, right? They have a lot of things that they can change with their virtual booths, right? There's plenty of room for networking at their virtual booth, which is something that um, you don't always see on virtual event platforms. So I was really pleased to see this. When it comes to networking, another great feature of Airmeet is the speed networking. So when you go to the launch section of an Airmeet event, on the top right here, you will see start networking. So if you click on this, uh, I need to enable my camera mic, but if you click on this, you will basically be placed in rotation to meet with new people, right? So let's say you're, you have an interest in marketing, someone else also has an interest in marketing, Airmeet will match you with that person so that you can meet people with whom you can have meaningful conversations. In addition, at the launch, you have these networking tables again. So as an event host, you can create different themes for uh, networking tables and then people can decide, all right, you know, this is a nice networking table, let's join. 
and then it will um, open a screen with their camera just like a zoom call and they can chat with people this is really really nice now before we close off i want to spend some time on airmeet versus the competition first off why not simply host events using zoom the main difference between airmeet and zoom is that zoom is purpose-built for video conferencing and that airmeet is purpose-built for hosting virtual events and large virtual events you could host a small workshop on Zoom, but Airmeet offers a larger range of features to engage with your audience, and this will result in a better user experience. On Zoom, the host decides what the user does. On Airmeet, the user can decide what they want to do. On the flip side, how does Airmeet stack up against a major player like Cvent? Cvent is a much more mature player and therefore has, more, has a more feature-rich environment. In addition, they have sophisticated hybrid event uh, possibilities. And if you're organizing or planning to organize hybrid events, then I suggest going with Cvent as they have uh, better processes when it comes to checking in your physical attendees and merging the data with your virtual, uh, virtual audience. Now, this wraps up the video. And if you did enjoy it, please consider liking this video and subscribing. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.